This lesson is on the behavior of waves at media boundaries. Now, a media boundary is the spot where one medium meets another. So, for example, if here I have air, and this is water, then this line in between separating the two is the boundary. So, for instance, you know, like the air above a lake. The, the very surface of the lake would be the boundary between the two. Now, free end reflection is reflection that occurs when a wave hits a boundary where the second medium is less dense than the first. The reflection will have the same orientation as the original pulse. So I've drawn an example here. So we've got a wave going that way and it hits the boundary here at a free end. And because it's a free end, it will reflect in the opposite direction, but it's on the same side of the, uh, the medium. So in this case, it's still above. So an example of this is a flag. So if you have a flag that's flapping in the wind, that wind is creating waves, and when it gets to the end of the flag, it's hitting air, and since it's free end, it's not actually attached to air, it causes the wave to bounce back with the same orientation. Fixed end reflection, a reflection that occurs at a boundary where the second medium is unable to vibrate. So think of it as something that's attached. So it might be attached to a wall or think about when you were in the hall with your springs. You had someone holding on to the spring so that you could see it bounce back. So that person holding it caused it to be a fixed end because it couldn't pass the wave on into your arm. So the example you've got here is here's a wave going in towards the boundary. It hits the boundary and then it bounces back with the opposite orientation. So now it's going downwards instead of upwards. The other possible behavior is transmission. So wave transmission is the motion of a wave through a medium or how it moves from one medium to another through a media boundary. So you can think of wave transmission through a medium on its own or th through a boundary. Either one can be referred to as wave transmission. So if we're going from a faster to a slower medium, we are going to go through um, part of it's going to go through and part of it's going to actually bounce back. So the result of going from faster to slower is going to be that part of it will go through um, and it will go through with the same orientation. So we're going to have part of the wave end up out here going in that direction and part of it is also going to reflect and it's going to reflect with the same orientation so we're also going to get part of the wave going that way. And notice that I've drawn it smaller than the original wave, and that's because the, remember the amplitude is representing energy, right? So this has this much energy. So I can only have that much energy in the result. So part of the energy is going to the reflection, and part of the energy is going into the transmitted wave. So if you add up the energy here and here, you should get the energy that you started with here. Other option is that for a wave to go from a slower to a faster medium. So you're still going to get two waves, one transmitted, one reflected. And the transmitted wave always transmits on this with the same orientation. Okay, it can't reverse just transmitting through an object. That would be like it tr transmitting through one medium and then all of a sudden flipping, which seems totally illogical. Okay, so transmission always goes with the same orientation. So we've got my transmitted wave here. And we're also going to get a reflected wave. And since we're going from slower to faster, this time it's actually going to invert. So we're going to get the opposite orientation. And notice one more time that your energy that you get from here is now split into this and this. We're also going to look at the standing wave. It's a wave that appears to stand still caused by interference of a wave on itself. 
this was another one that you were demonstrating in your group out in the hall with the spring, um, where you were continuously sending a wave down. And once you kind of got it going into its kind of natural motion, you should have been able to see it get into this standing wave pattern, which basically would have meant that you had parts of the wave that were doing really big amplitudes going back and forth and parts that were barely moving at all. <clears throat> so there are names for these aspects here as well. So the, the node is these points that don't move. So the node is a point of a standing wave that is constantly at rest. Whereas an antinode is a point on a standing wave that moves with the greatest speed and has the largest amplitude. So this antinode is the points that occur such as that.